Okay, hello everyone. So um, today we are going to be looking at um, 6.1 and 6.2 for the rate of reaction and factors affecting rates of reaction. I apologize, it sounds a little echoey in here. Um, I'm actually in a room in the library, so it's a one of the seminar rooms, so it's kind of different sound. Um, but hopefully it's going to come out clear anyways. Um, so chapter six is looking at something called chemical kinetics. So essentially it's a way of looking at, obviously we're looking at chemical reactions, but really any process. And now I'm discussing the speed at which it's happening. So if the reaction is going slow or fast, but not only just saying slow or fast, but actually being able to monitor the change and look at how quickly it happens to be going. Because that's referred to as looking at the rate of a reaction, okay? Um, so when we're looking at the rate of reaction, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, you need something to monitor. So that could be, and it's written down here, you can look at change in mass, change in concentration, change in color. Um, obviously, it would have to match the process. So if we're looking at change in mass, maybe it has a solid that's being... Um, decomposed. So we can measure the rate at which it's decomposing. Maybe um, concentration is relatively easy. Um, I'll be honest, concentration is the one that we are going to be looking at the most. Uh, color, obviously this would only apply to different ions or species that have color in them. So if, obviously if they're colorless, we cannot monitor that. Um, conductivity, volume or pressure have to do mostly for when you're dealing with gases or change to a gas, and really anything that can be measured. So the rate of the reaction that we're looking at, typically we are looking at one substance in a reaction, right? So let's say I have A plus B making C. You guys love my A plus B makes C. So when we're talking about the rate of this reaction, we can say, okay, well, how quickly is A being used? Or how quickly is B being used? Or we can look at how quickly is C being produced? So you can look at the rate, rate of reaction with really any reactant or any product. Um, so obviously the rate will be dependent on what you're measuring, but you're either measuring a product or a reactant, and it doesn't matter which one, but of course it's over units of time. Right? So if I want to see how much C is made, we're going to be talking about, you know, how quickly is it being made in, let's say, a minute, two minutes. What's the rate of that reaction? It has to be a time increment that you're monitoring. So units for the rate is going to be very different. It depends on what are you monitoring and essentially um, what's the unit of time you're doing it in. So for example, if I'm doing mass, I could be, have units of kilograms per hour. I could have kilograms per minute. I could have grams per second. I could have milligrams per minute. Uh, like it really doesn't matter what the unit of the rate is because uh, it's dependent on what are you looking at and what unit you're looking at it in and what's the unit of time. So you can see here we have like moles per minute but it could be moles per day. It does not have to be a specific time increment. And this one here actually, moles per liter per second, is the most common. Just like how I mentioned to you, concentration will be the most common one we'll look at. This is the most common unit of rate that we will be looking at. But rate units can be different for every single process. So it's moles per liter, which is a unit of concentration per second, right? We're not going to be here, hopefully, we're not monitoring something for hours at a time. Okay, so uh, in general, when we are talking about rate, so the symbol for rate is a lowercase r. Um, we have unit here, change in concentration over change in time. So again, this is what can change. Um, from reaction to reaction. So we will be looking at change in concentration over change in time, right? So this is why we would have moles per liter. And then in this case, our time increment would be seconds. 
But this could be change in mass over change in time, change in conductivity over change in time, change in volume, whatever the thing you happen to be monitoring over whatever unit of time you happen to be using. So the change in time is always in the denominator, but the numerator can change depending on what you're looking at. Okay, so one of the nice things about looking at rate is that once you know the rate of one substance, you can actually determine the rate of everything in that reaction. We're gonna start off slow. Okay, we'll look at this first example. This is just straight up calculating the rate. So let's take a look here. What is the rate of production of ammonia for the system between one minute and four minutes? So we have our initial time that we are beginning to look at the rate change and our final time, right? So between one and four minutes. If the concentration of ammonia is 3.5 moles per liter at one minute, so we have the concentration at the first time increment, and we have the concentration at the second time increment, so 6.2 moles per liter at four minutes. So essentially, are you doing change in concentration over change in time? It's essentially you're just plugging in the values. So change in anything, if you recall from what we've been doing so far in this unit, is always your final minus initial. So change in concentration, you're going to do your second concentration minus your first. So 6.2 minus 3.5. When you are looking at your change in time, same thing, final minus initial. And you're going to divide the two out. So once you work that out, you get 0 0.90 moles per liter. And check this out. This one, we happen to be working in minutes. So this is moles per liter per minute. Just because I told you, you know, we're most of the time gonna be using seconds, that doesn't mean every single process is going to be using seconds. So this is perfectly fine, moles per liter per minute. Now, um, if you recall from grade 11, capital M is the same thing as saying moles per liter expanded, like moles slash liters. And also I have this note here. So when you're doing moles per liter, you can also replace that with the capital M. So this is read in exactly the same way. So this is moles per liter per minute, as is this. Okay, so this is where you have essentially two data points, right? We have time concentration at one, and then the reaction continues. We have time and concentration with the other. Now, what I was talking about before with um, looking at rates for everything, this value is the rate of ammonia production. Because we have this information, we could actually apply it to the reactants. And we will do an example like that. Essentially, it comes down to using mole uh, ratios once again. Okay, but we'll kind of, we'll ease you in here. Okay. So finding the average rate of a reaction over time. This is essentially um, what we just did in that example. So rate is change in concentration over change in time. So let's say we had a graph. So in this example, right, so time is in seconds and we have concentration of a reactant. Okay, so we're not dealing with a product here, it's a reactant. We have Obviously, the concentration will begin at some point. So this point here is really like the start of the reaction before it even begins. As the reaction continues, the reactant is being used. This should make sense because the reactant is becoming product. So this line has a negative slope, right? Does everyone see that? Um, so if I wanted to know the rate between two points on this graph, it's exactly the same thing we did before. You would have an initial time and concentration, and this would be our second time and concentration. So we essentially will be doing change in Y over change in X. Change in Y happens to be change in concentration. Change in X is change in time, in this case, seconds, right? Um, 
just to kind of also, while we're on this point here, let me add in a new sheet. Okay. So, graphs will look different. So here is our concentration, here is our time, right? Um, another symbol for concentration, if you recall, are square brackets, right? So this is like equivalent to moles per liter, the concentration. So let's say we were looking at a reactant, right? Reactant concentration will always decrease over time, right? We start with a certain amount in our beaker or test tube, whatever the case is, the reaction happens, and it will go down in concentration. If we were looking at a product, so the red is a reactant, wow, my mouse skills, okay, anyway, the red color is representing a reactant. If we were looking at a product, so we make blue our product here, okay, so a product, if you think about at the beginning of a reaction, how much product we start with, the answer is nothing. You start at zero. You have no product at the beginning. So what happens is over time, we make a product, right? Products will always have a positive slope and reactants will always have a negative slope. So when you are answering questions about rate, okay, the rate of a reactant is always a negative rate, okay? But negative doesn't count as like a regular negative you would think. It's not like we have a negative concentration. The negative in this case is essentially representing the fact that it's being consumed. So the concentration is decreasing over time because it is being used in that reaction. The fact that you have a positive rate for a product represents that it is being produced, right? So we start with nothing and we end up having something obviously made at the end of that reaction. Now, when you're doing this, and you'll see this in several graphs, even in your textbook, the concentration of a reactant will never get down to the zero point, okay? Um, and you saw that actually even in this one over here, right? Like this will continue and get really, really, really close to that x-axis, but never actually hit the zero. And uh, the reason for that is actually what our next unit's gonna be all about, and that's called equilibrium. So meaning, um, essentially what that entails is that some product will always revert back to reactant, so the reactant level will never actually become zero. So don't worry about that too, too much right now. We're gonna spend like literally a month talking about it. Um, but for now, just so you kind of understand why you'll never see that kind of hit the, the end there at the zero line. Okay, so we talked about rates. Rate of reactants should be negative. Rate of products will be positive. And be careful, your textbook actually does not put the negative symbol. What it will do, how it kind of gets away with that, is it says the word consumed. So let's say, for example, this rate was um, negative two moles per liter per second, okay, for this pro uh, reactant, right? So if it's negative two moles per liter per second, how you can kind of get away with outputting the negative symbol is we can say the sentence, the reactant is being consumed at two moles per liter per second. By seeing the word consumed, or saying the word consumed, it automatically means it's a negative, okay? But if you write down rate is equal to negative two moles per liter per second, it's exactly the same thing. It's like a symbol representing what is happening to that particular species or substance.